Do you have any ideas for people who should be on this podcast next? If so, please contact us through the website for any ideas, people we should have on next, or anything else. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us at www.themoreyanoco.com. Peek around, see what you find. We're always trying to connect listeners with this show in new ways. And now, for the episode, and some brand new music from our man Russell Isaac Long. Also, if you haven't listened to his episode number 67, go do that too. Welcome to the Morinoco, the podcast bringing you awesome ideas and people from northern Colorado. I am Ivan Wayne, your host. Are you ready to rumble? For those of you in the know, this weekend is WrestleMania, occurring just outside New York City. In honor of that, our guest today is a local professional wrestler. Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling is based out of Golden, and some of their shows come further up into northern Colorado. Our guest on this episode is the youngest champ ever to come out of RMP, and his name is Atiba. You ready, listener? Let's go. Public Library with Atiba, who is a professional wrestler with Rocky Mountain Pro. So first of all, good evening and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So for the listeners out there, what is it that you do here at Rocky Mountain Pro? Well, I'm one of the uh, wrestlers at Rocky Mountain Pro. I'm one of the people you'll see on the shows doing all the crazy flips and stuff. I'm just more of the the wrestler guy. I'm not like the production or anything. Right. So you, when the lights, camera, action come on, you're the person with the microphone. You're the person out there wrestling. Yep, that's me. So how did you get into this? Originally, I'd probably, I'd say just wrestling. I've been a fan since I was super young when I started watching wrestling. Like the first thing I remember was like watching um was catching a Smack Friday Night SmackDown on TV and I just was like I just saw it and I was like enamored with it and I was like wow this is like for some reason it's just like something so like I don't know how to describe it but whenever I see wrestling it's like wow and then later like I fell off for like a few years but then like halfway through college I kind of realized that I wanted to be doing wrestling I was like I need to find some place that has wrestling for it for me and then that's when I discovered Rocky Mountain Pro. Oh, wow. So are you from the Colorado area? Originally, no. I was born in Richmond, Virginia. And then I moved out here. My family and my family moved out here when I was about... I was pretty young, like six or seven when we moved out here. Okay, nice. So where were you going to college at? Um, Metropolitan State University in Denver. Nice. And so you start getting this wrestling itch, and the dream door starts opening. Did you finish college? Well, I'm I'm t- I t- I'm taking a little break right now. Like this semester, I'm like just focusing on wrestling. But to keep my parents happy, I'm planning on going back <laughs> in the fall and stuff. So yeah. So when do you join Rocky Mountain Pro? Actually, it'll be tomorrow. It'll be a year. A year since I joined Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah. And how has it been? It's been a crazy. It's been a crazy ride. Like um, when I first started last March last year, I just I was I was nervous. I was like, I see all these people doing all these moves and stuff, and I was like, how am I supposed to be able to keep up and everything? <laughs> but I've been going to practices consistently throughout this entire year, and just I've caught up in. A really short amount of time. I've already like I've I say I'd say I've reached the level of many of the top guys in Rocky Mountain. Ooh, bold claim. I I wonder if they hear that. (laughs) I'm just saying, like from what I've done 
since I've started, it's been it's been a really good a really good ride so far. Yeah. Now I reached out to you originally because I noticed that you were I don't know how many championship belts you all have, but you were the champ. I was at the time I, I originally reached out yes, to you. Unfortunately, it looks like that championship has fell from your graces. Uh, yeah. Since we came in contact. That's true. Yeah. I mean. I always have that I'm RMP's youngest ever champion. So I got the championship when I was 19. So oh, you're the youngest ever champ. Yeah, so, so that's kind of like Randy Orton. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, yeah, you can think you can fit it like that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were growing up, do, who were some of your favorite wrestlers and who were your idols? Growing up, um, definitely John Cena. Oh. I, I saw him as a kid. And I I saw him. and He's just like larger than life. And I was like. <laughs> That's a cool guy. But I also liked um, guys like uh, Batista. I've only really started like going back into wrestling like the 90s and stuff. So now I've really started learning about the wrestlers of like Macho Man, Stone Cold, The Rock. I knew about those guys, but now I'm really starting to like actually watch them because they were a little bit before my time. Because mm. I was too young to be able to be watching wrestling back right. in those days. But Definitely, I think John Cena would be my favorite. John Cena. And yeah. that's funny because that, of all the people in wrestling, John Cena is a sort of a household name. A lot of people know John Cena even if they scoff and roll their eyes at wrestling. They yeah. know who Cena is. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I respect about it. Like he's, one of the, he's one of the wrestlers who's been able to build himself up to the level where even people who don't even like watch wrestling or know much about it have been able to be like, okay, yeah, I've at least heard that name and stuff. Right. So what year did you start watching? Say... Would have been 2002, 2003? 2002, no, that was, I was like five or something back in those days. I started watching, it was like 2006, 2007, okay. I'd say. 06 so, and 07. Yeah, I was in like third grade or something when I first saw wrestling, and I was like, yeah... That's something I want to do. <laughs> now, are you going back just to educate yourself on the history of the sport, or what is causing you to go like go back in the archives and watch old episodes now? Yeah, it's mostly kind of to educate myself. But yeah, I'm trying to trying to see what now that I'm learning to be a wrestler. It's instead of just watching it as a fan, I'm learning to like see what other wrestlers have done. And see what I can learn from them. So I've been watching stuff from the older days of wrestling, but I'm still watching like the newest stuff as well to see what to keep keep with the current product, but also learn from the past as well. Yeah. So between old, your favorites, old classic wrestlers, and maybe stuff of today, who would you say your style is closest to? Or do you, you know when you're out there wrestling? In the in the squared circle, uh, who are you trying to emulate? I'm, I try not to. I'm not. I don't think I'm trying to emulate anyone specifically, but it's probably probably a bad way to put it. Yeah, but I guess like style influences would be. Um, I mean, I get a lot of influence from like um, wrestlers who's like I, I've been watching like wrestlers who do like the high flying stuff. So I've I've no. I feel like. I get a little bit from, like, I like watching Rey Mysterio. He was another one of my favorites as a kid. And, like, so any of the high-flying wrestlers, but I'm also learning, like, the wrestlers who just kept it more on the ground and stuff. And I'm also, like, the wrestlers who are more the charismatic type of guys because I want to be able to, like, have that type of energy that people can, like, feed off of, Mm. you know? Right, yeah, and I was watching a couple of your matches on YouTube that have been recorded, and you did this front flip frog splash on the on the guy, and I don't know if you won because I didn't see the end of it, but yeah, I noticed that you have kind of this acrobatic, high flying style, and do you come off the top rope a lot? Um, I end up I end up going off the top rope a lot. Yeah, so, <laughs> and I saw you took uh, at least three chair shots during that match because oh. it was a no disqualification. Oh, that! Oh, yeah, that match. So, how, how's it feel to take a metal chair to the back? It's not. It's not. Um, it's not fun at all. But <laughs> I mean, it's not a good thing to get used to, but I, I've gotten used to. It, I guess that's what I can say. But. There's no way to sugarcoat it. it. It hurts. And that's one thing that I knew we would kind of stumble into in this conversation is that some listeners who are not big wrestling fans out there are sitting here thinking, now, Ivan, Atiba, this is all nice and great, but isn't it fake, right? And I really don't like that word in quotes because 
it's not like when people watch your stuff and hopes they either come see you live, we'll plug Rocky Mountain Pro, mm-hmm. or if they see your videos on YouTube, but when they see you get hit in the head or when they see you fall off the top rope or you get hit with a chair, that there's nothing fake about that. That is real. Yeah, that is completely real. It's Yeah, I don't like it when people call wrestling fake either because they, they only see like... They don't see the time and effort and all the like all the practices that wrestlers have done to get themselves to that level where they can perform without um, like people saying it's fake all the time. So yeah, that's always been one of my pet peeves with um, people who are new to wrestling. But it's like I want to be. I, that's why I try and get them to like the shows and stuff so they, so they can see like this is not just some fake sport or something. It's like. People are actually working hard to make this whole um, experience for people to be able to enjoy. And it's fascinating when you find out the underpinnings. Like, for example, Kevin Owens is a heel. It's a guy who is supposed to be mean out there in the ring. You're not supposed to like him most of the time. And a lot of people, now social media adds another complex layer to wrestling. And whether you're a heel or a face, so a heel means that you're typically a bad guy. A negative person face means like the crowd typically wants to cheer you on. And Kevin Owens is a person who never turns that persona off. If you look at his Twitter, it's hilarious because he's roasting fans all the time. And he is savage on there and keeps that character going. Whereas other people, as soon as the taping goes off and they're matches over they become just their own self on social media i think it's just kind of fascinating because back in the 70s 80s 90s people didn't have this social media realm to see their favorite wrestler in a different light like that the creation of like social media and everything it's like really made it so i guess as a wrestler you can choose how you want to present yourself especially when you're not wrestling so that's what makes it so it's like you can not yeah you can choose Oh, I, I'm just gonna keep this going even on social media. Or I want to show. I want people to also be able to know that yeah, I have other things besides just wrestling. <laughs> right. I guess. So. Yeah. How do you decide to toe that line? How do you decide to be your wrestling persona or just yourself? I try and make it so like, I my social media is as close to how I am without without wrestling as possible because like people should be able to know like. Who Ativa is, like he's a wrestler. Yes, that's a big part of it. But also, there's other things about him that you might want to know, and that's I feel like that's what helps make another connection as well with people. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's a wrestler, but he also does stuff like like whatever on on the side, you know. And when it comes to the predetermined nature of wrestling, one parallel I always draw to is like let's take Game of Thrones for example. So a lot of times when people find out that I'm a fan of wrestling, they say, well, don't you, what's the fun in, in the outcome? Like, aren't they actors? And don't you know the end? And I, and what I say is, how come nobody turns on Game of Thrones and in the middle of the episode stops their friend, puts their arm over here and, and you know, pauses the TV, turns over around him and say, you know, that's not a real dragon, right? Like, yeah. people don't say that. Yeah, that, People don't stop yeah. in the middle of it. And, and you get to an episode and you wouldn't watch the season finale of Game of Thrones and be like, wow, that's not as good because... I know that they wrote that ahead of time. It doesn't ruin yeah, the experience. No, yeah, yeah, I, I've always thought, yeah, because um, people, well, people say they know what the outcome of a match is going to be, but it's, it's more what's happening during the match that you want to, like when you're watching TV, you don't just watch it just to watch the season finale, I hope at least. But <laughs> like, um, I watch, like you watch TV to watch the whole story unfold and everything. So like when people just say, oh, we know this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think people, like, really know what's going to happen. They just assume they know what's going to happen. So then I say just, like, enjoy the story being presented to you. As my friend always reminds me, suspend your disbelief. Yeah. Just let it go. That's what, get that's get what lost people, That's in what it. people do with, it, like, everything else, I'd say. But I will say, I will admit that oftentimes when I'm in the gym and I look up and I see ESPN and I see them interviewing, like, Charlotte or Roman Reigns, uh, prominent people in wrestling, 
that kind of makes me like I think every fan draws a line somewhere and for me that's kind of strange and I don't know maybe you disagree but I still know that because I don't I don't know it's just strange because I remember last Wrestlemania season about a year ago I looked up and saw Stephanie McMahon being interviewed and I was just like man is Sports Center a place for WWE and wrestling I mean, it is because, I mean, WWE is still running a business and everything, and Stephanie McMahon is a business person, so it's like, yeah, she has to still do the business aspect of it. It can't it can't just be people with steel chairs all the time. So it's like, <laughs> they, yeah, of course they're going to interview it because she has information to give about wrestling and everything, so... I, I think it belongs in there as well. And, and I would say that now, um, I know the ratings of the, the traditional weekly WWE episodes are lower than they used to be, but I would say that wrestling is more in the common public square now than maybe it ever has been. I see it on Snapchat everywhere. I see it on TV commercials, and it's on billboards. And I feel like all the wrestling fans out there, all of us, it's kind of like this weird, odd society. And it's, it's almost like in secret. And then, because it's funny, sometimes I'll find out that somebody else that I've known for a while is a wrestling fan. I'm like, oh, you like wrestling? Like, we've never talked about this. Like, we just didn't bring it up before. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, with wrestling, it's um, it's strange. Like, that, yeah, like, I've, yeah, I, that's the same thing that's happened to me. Like, I've been talking to some of my friends, like, oh, I didn't know you liked wrestling as well. But it's like with um the WWE, but also the independent scene. Like it's with how it's constructed now. It's more like there's more opportunities for people who aren't in the big companies to be able to wrestle all over, and that helps. So you can like build a build a network for um wrestlers to be able to put on good shows all around the country, even without the support of a huge company like WWE. Yeah, I've been to a couple of Rocky Mountain Pro shows, and for any listener out there, whether you enjoy wrestling or not, I highly recommend that you go, because if anything, it's going to be an interesting experience. Yes, I I highly recommend. (laughs) Check out all of Rocky Mountain Pro shows. That's right, and so you all perform in Golden every Thursday evening. Every Thursday evening in Golden at the Jefferson County Fairground. Okay, and then if you want to look that up, it's just RockyMountainPro.com, right? Uh, Rocky Mountain Pro, yeah, um, on Facebook is the, I've, I think is the easiest way to find us. Uh, just search Rocky Mountain Pro on Facebook, and it has all the events, I think over 80 events planned for this entire year. Oh, dang. And we're, gonna, we're definitely adding more every week, it seems like we're adding more. So yeah. there's plenty of opportunities to come check Check out Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah. And then getting into it, um, how do you find yourself practicing? Uh, for if you wanted to become a wrestler? No, like just since you've started at Rocky Mountain Pro, do you get like certain mat time? Do you get time to cut promos? Or like how have you in the last year get been given the opportunities to, to get better as a wrestler? Um, just like by being given opportunities to wrestle in shows, that's been like being first being able to practice as much as I do because of the coaches like giving their time to like show up as much as I do, and then at um shows giving me the opportunity to wrestle in shows and show them that I can um perform at a good level. So that's that's really what. I think has like elevated me. Yeah, and has there been something since you started that was way different than you thought? Since I started, a big um, surprise. I was surprised at how much, how like uh, how physically demanding it was. I thought I was in pretty good shape when I started wrestling, but then I started at practice and everything. I was like, I was out of breath like every single week, and I was like, wow, this is so. Yeah, this is it was like really exhausting. So I was like. I had a, I found a newfound respect for wrestling as a whole when I realized exactly how hard it was. Yeah, so how'd you get better cardio? How'd you get in better shape? Just, there's, a, I mean, running and just, there's a bunch of in-ring drills they have us do just to get in that ring shape that it's it's still it's still tough but it's definitely getting easier the more i go what are some common questions or things that people say when you tell them that you're a wrestler and that you are here at rocky mountain pro they always ask like isn't that like first they, the first question is always like isn't that stage and stuff and it's like <laughs> no and then but then like People ask, like, yeah, then they start asking, like, stuff like, does it hurt? And, like, how do you, like, how do you get into it and all that stuff? So it's, like, it's, like, the usual questions, but 
people are yeah people always have like the first the, the first questions are like isn't is that stuff real or something so that's what the very new person will ask yeah have you ever got someone who had no idea about wrestling or was not a fan at all did you have you convinced them to come to a show yeah there's been a, there's been a good amount especially with Rocky Mountain for like people who didn't know about wrestling and because we wrestle all over the state pretty much they were able to discover it and now we've made like many new fans like we just wrestled at the pepsi center a couple weeks ago yeah i saw that yeah so and then you also do shows this this being a northern colorado podcast you also do shows sometimes up in lafayette right yes at um romero's at romero's bar and then I first saw you all at the Rack House Pub in downtown Denver. Yeah. Which, for people who are familiar, it's in the Rhino area, which oh, yeah. was super neat. I got front row seats. Rack House Pub is definitely, if you, I, I'd recommend Rack House Pub if you've never seen Rocky Mountain Pro before. We run the Rocky Mountain Pro experience at Rack House Pub. It's just a fun time. First, we start with some fun and games before the show starts. And then we get to the wrestling right around nine. So what are things that you're working on now that you're a year in and some like focuses you want for the near future? Um, just building up who I am as a wrestler. I'm trying to get out on the road more, trying to see what... Because there's, there's a whole world of wrestling. Just wrestling for one promotion is going to get you good, but then you also have to go around and build yourself up as well to build your reputation. Yeah, have you been to any shows with uh, Colorado Springs Wrestling down south? I haven't been able to get down to Colorado Springs yet, no. But I have been out to Utah to do a show out there. So. Oh, nice. You were in it. Yeah. You were it in was, the show. Yeah, I was able to get over there and do a show over there, and that was that was a good time. I liked it. I, liked, I hadn't been done a road trip before yet so that was a fun experience yeah now were you surprised being less than a year in and being able to hold that purple rocky mountain pro championship belt i i can't say i was i i want to say i was too surprised because i have to like i guess give myself a little bit of credit like i've been working hard but like i was like shocked as well at the same time so it's like but it's, I'm just glad to know that my hard work has been paying off. Contemplating staying enrolled in college at Metro State, you you got the wrestling gig. Do you have another job on the side? No, really, just wrestling. Really, just I I work at a restaurant on the side just to make ends meet, I guess. But right. Otherwise, it's just wrestling. Just wrestling. And I'm wearing a Chris Jericho shirt as we speak, which yeah. Talk is Jericho was the very first podcast I ever got into. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that podcast. Yeah. yeah no. It's really good. And one of the things he does when he interviews a lot of wrestlers is he just talks about those indie days, talking about sleeping in their car, traveling on their own money, like not knowing where the next event is going to be and just like trying to make it, holding down odd jobs and just... This is so fascinating to hear the stories because, you know, with any career field, entrepreneurs or business owners or, or, you know, elected politicians, it's interesting to hear the backstory and how they got there. And if Atiba is one day a household wrestling name, you will have this story you'll be telling someone. It's crazy, like the whole, yeah, whole independent thing, just building, like this, the whole process of becoming a professional wrestler, it's it's crazy, but it's like, yeah, I'm really enjoying everything that I'm doing so far. And yeah, hopefully I work hard enough to make myself yeah, one of those household names like Chris Jericho. Right. And one thing I think that imp- impresses me and non-wrestling fans alike is that when you watch the episode, remind yourself it's all live. It's always live every week. You have these people who come out and they talk on the microphone and they build these stories and events and they never mess up a line it's like they'll go months without it, like any mess up did the did the live part of it and be holding that microphone or or saying things in front of uh, a whole crowd that make you nervous at first or uh, yeah like talk yeah talking is definitely tough it's like it's it's nerve-wracking but you just have to just like with everything else you just have to get used to it and just constant repetition helps you get better at it so do you ever talk to yourself in the mirror you ever talking like on your way to work or anything i i try and talk as much as possible nowadays just to get used to 
hearing my own voice, I guess. You ever, like, record yourself so it, like, puts the pressure on? Yeah, yeah. I, I do that all the time. Just to, just for practice for myself and stuff. Is there anybody at Rocky Mountain Pro that deserves a shout-out that you really enjoy working with? I just uh, give a shout-out to, like, all my coaches there. So, like, um, like Matt Yaden, who's... Matt Yaden and uh, Alex Zach is the president of the company. They really worked hard to give us all of the opportunities that we've had at Rocky Mountain Pro this year. They've been setting up all the events and everything. So I really like, those guys deserve a big shout out. And to, to all the coaches over there who've helped me get to the level where I'm at right now. So yeah. thanks to all, thanks to all you guys. Heck yeah. For putting in the work, man, and helping you become a champ in less than a year. Look at you. That's dusting it. off the shoulders. It's, yeah, it's a it's it's a crazy experience. <laughs> and when you found them, how did you get involved? Did they have like an open call tryout or what did that look like? Mercury Pro Wrestling Academy out of the same place, at Jefferson County Fairgrounds. And yeah, I just I found him just by, um, I'd been looking for like a school to start wrestling at for a while. And my mom first, I was looking at like all the only schools I'd heard of and they were in like Florida and stuff. But then my mom told me to like start, start local first. And I found, yeah, I found Mercury Pro Wrestling Academy. And that's where, that's how I've been able, that's why I'm here now, I guess. Cause like I found that place. And the coaches there helped me get to where I'm at. So, so what did the tryout look like? You showed up, just, just like first they just bring you through the basic stuff and just like first seeing what the what type of condition you're in and a couple like the basics that like running the ropes and stuff like that. Do just some just, rolls, take some bumps. Yeah, just to see how that looks. Just uh, yeah, get a base level, basic level of where you're at before. It, and see if you want to come back and everything. Because not everybody who does the tryout is not going to be able to make it, I guess. But, like, if you stay committed and dedicated, like, everybody, you should be able to get on shows and stuff in no time. Well, you mean, like, people show up to try out because they like the appeal, they like the attention, they, they might like the, you know, the spotlight that comes along with it, but they're not willing to take the, the pain and the hard work? Well, no, people, no. Like, the people who show up to the tryout are definitely interested in wrestling and but like it just it's, it takes a it takes a certain mindset to be a to really be a a true wrestler so i like all the people at rocky mountain pro i know they all have like that mindset they want to they want to make this they want to make something out of it so what do you think some pieces of this mind this very crucial mindset are <laughs> willing to pitch a body on the line i guess is one of them it's just like Cause you're every like every time you wrestle, you know you're gonna have to like make some sacrifices. Like, but I don't think that's that shouldn't weigh too heavily on anybody's mind. It's just like for me, I'm just I'm really just there because I wanna. This is what I wanna do. I know this is what I wanna do. Stuff like I'm getting hurt doesn't weigh too heavily on me. So if people are interested and hopefully they want to support our guest here, Ativa, how could they? find out about you where can they find your material and then how could they find and see you in person first of all you can find me on social media at wrestler atiba on instagram and twitter and if you want to support the whole rocky Man pro just come to as many shows as possible every thursday at seven in golden at jefferson county fairgrounds at the end of the month we're at rackhouse pub in denver Romero's in Lafayette, and just recently we're going to be starting wrestling at Summit Music Hall. Oh, nice. Where's Summit Music Hall? That's not too far from Rack House, as I know. I need to look that up again as well. That's okay. But that's not... Yeah, it's also in Denver, right in that same area. And so hopefully when people come out, Atiba's going to be the champ again, and they can see you host that bell above your head. Yep, that's that's definitely the goal. So <laughs> come, on, come on out. Either way, it's going to be a great show. Just come and enjoy some wrestling. Bring your friends. I I can't stress how how much fun I've had watching as a fan and just being doing it as a wrestler. So okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me once again. If you enjoy the more you know, Co, please check out our other episodes. We've had such a variety of interesting and awesome people. You never know what you're gonna find. I've been in awe and wonder going on this journey around Northern Colorado. Read the episode descriptions, take a shot, and discover our NoCo community. Trevor Fossey, always putting in the time to edit and mix these episodes. Thank you so much for your dedication and hard work. Russell Isaac Long, our guest on episode 67 of the show, makes all our music here at The More You NoCo. 
Thank you, good sir. We are on Facebook and Instagram if you're interested in staying connected with us. Or, just to see bonus visual content in addition to this very audio-driven podcast experience. We will be back soon with another conversation, exploring and connecting the people who make up Northern Colorado. Until next time, peace!